Bust out the bongs, light up the blunts, and put on some sunscreen, homies, because we're talking the beach bum right now on Miscast Entertainment. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Get to the chopper! Shout to my ear I'm going to make it run off again. This is my You're going to need a bigger boat. Welcome back, you Miscast miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment. And a very special episode, because on this episode, we have the dude that played Limp D on The Beach Bum, Joshua Ritter! What's up, buddy? What's <laughs> up? <laughs> and I'm your host, William Davis Moore, as always, screwing shit up, left and right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude, welcome to Miscast Entertainment, Thanks man. Thanks for having me on. This is awesome. Dude, it was a hardcore scheduling nightmare to get you yeah, on, right? This was, like, this we, was, it was a lot of work, but it's worth it. <laughs> we went through some shite. Yeah. <laughs> so... Let's talk about your role in the Beach Bum. Give me today, I'm gonna start off a little bit of poetic foreplay. One day I will swallow up the world. <laughs> and when I do, I hope you all perish violently. Moon <laughs> dog. Moon dog. Now you look like shit. Yeah, I look like I always look. <laughs> you have pissed away your talent on women and booze and. Now you're talking. That's what feeds the juices up here in my nugget, man. I get all these things going. I start to hear music. The world's reverberating back and forth, and I hit the frequency. Wish me luck. I'm off to write the next great American novel. Let me have a gangbang when I get back. I will invite your mother. Thank you, Mr. Mundog. I'm trying to uncover my connection with the world. Just follow me, my friend. Let's go, man. Is he a good pilot? Mom, man, you got glaucoma in both his eyes. It's perfect. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's funny because the, the, the actual character is in the script is just the groom because he named all the characters just like incidentally as to like the situation they were in right because moon dog the lead guy right. mcconaughey is the focus of right. the whole thing right so um everybody is sort of going into his world and so the whole movie is whatever influence they have on his world so there's only a few characters that actually have names and everybody else is just you know this thing and what happened was in the script <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna love this. There's a whole story behind why everybody knows my character as Limp D, but it's not really Limp D because they say the full thing. Uh, it, it constantly refer to my character as the Limp Dick husband. He's f***ed up, Mom. Ugh. It's just Moondog. Don't make excuses for him. But you just kind of have to accept that he's, he's from another dimension. He really is. And you have to love him for it. I do. You and Limp Dick are gonna have to accept that. <laughs> And so they started improving that, and at one point, uh, Snoop turns to me and, and calls me Mr. Limpy. And ever since Mr. then, Limpy. everybody, and there's a story behind that, but everybody's just like, oh, limp dick, limp dick. And so what happened was, <laughs> if, you, if you look at Wikipedia, you look at the reviews and stuff, they're just constantly referring to my character as limp dick. Dude, it's hilarious because uh, when I was doing my research for the notes and stuff, uh, you go on IMDb, you're just a groom. Yeah. You go on Wikipedia, you're limp. You're limp D. Which <laughs> is freaking great, man. It's it's not it's not the best nickname to have, but honestly, like I'm just thrilled to have one. <laughs> Dude, it's pretty freaking sweet for a move for this kind of a movie. I mean, it's this supposed movie, to be like a Cheech and Chong movie. It's yeah. Pretty freaking pimp of a name. People it are is, gonna remember that. People are gonna remember yeah. that, and it's it's um. It's a wild, wild movie. I saw it for the first time. I went to the uh, the premiere at South by Southwest in Austin. And it's just like, it's so wild and over the top and crazy. And I obviously I read the script and I was like, this is going to be fun. And then I saw it, you know, because Harmony right. Corinne is directing. Yeah, and Harmony did... Uh the kids he wrote it he didn't direct it but right uh, yeah my yeah God, man he's he's like a mega he's crazy shit. He, he's uh he's got a unique perspective and he's a wild man and he's he's really easy to work with but he's got a uh, a reputation of being you know a little off and he he really is his own man i mean he's he's got his own vision and he doesn't care 
Like he's doing his thing. And it's really, really <laughs> refreshing to work with somebody like that. Like he's just, he's having, a, he had so much fun on the set and it made everybody else have fun. Of course, Matthew was having the time of his life, McConaughey. Dude. <laughs> and so everybody just felt really relaxed. And the thing was that Harmony likes to improv. He has this incredible thing that you don't get all the time where he trusts the actors. And he's like, just do your thing. Yeah. And so I didn't even realize in the first scene, everybody's saying stuff that wasn't in the script. And I was like, did I not get the latest script? <laughs> and I'm freaking out because it's my first scene and my heart's racing and I got Snoop Dogg here and Isla Fisher's there and McConaughey's coming in here. There's no blocking or anything? Like there, nobody like... There's, no, there's, there's no some blocking. Uh, the, he, I think he rehearsed with the stars, like the, the top <laughs> cast. <laughs> so it's like... And then I'm there with Stefania, who plays my wife, Stefania right. Owen, who's brilliant. And... Um, by the third take, it suddenly hit me. I was like, oh, we're improvising. <laughs> <laughs> so the blocking was pretty much the same, but the lines were changing like with every take. Right, right. And it just took me a minute. I'm so used to doing, you know, I've, I do a lot of commercials right. and I've done some TV shows and stuff. And usually things are run like tight as a drum. They keep things moving, keep things moving. Sure. And so you say your line. You don't say a word different. Like you, you, you get a, you know, you get read the riot act if you're not saying the exact line. And so I'm so in that mindset. So when people are improving, when I realize what we are doing, I finally, you know, could relax and do it too. And that was exciting too, because then you're improving with like McConaughey and Fisher and That's Snoop Dogg, which was like beautiful. And that was the initial first scene because of the wedding. The, the first scene, I, I can tell you this without don't, giving don't anything away. It, yeah. I'm not going to, no spoilers here, but the first scene that I shot uh, on my first day was getting married to Stefania's character, Heather. Right. And so St Stefania is uh, Moondog and uh, Minnie's daughter. Right. So it's McConaughey and Isla Fisher's daughter. And so uh, Snoop Dogg is the officiate at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> to give you an idea what this movie's like. Yeah. And it was just thrilling. It was amazing. And that so once, I, once I realized we were starting to improv, then I could play along with it. And that was really exciting. When, when you get a chance to improv... It's always fun in a movie, but when you can do it with people like that, it's like a gift from God. It's amazing. I took a few acting lessons down in Aventura for a couple of years, and I always found improv uh, so scary. Like not, you know, you practice the lines the whole time. You got right. this whole like persona mastered, like the breathing and everything. And right. Improving, you're like. <gasps> Everybody's staring at me. <laughs> I don't know what to say. No, it's but, but if everybody's stoned around you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was that was that was one of the funny things too, because like there I am, my first my first scene, and there's Snoop, and he's got boys running stuff down to him. All no day. shit. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Not surprised. <laughs> not surprised. And, and so, and he takes a hit, and he goes. Oh man, I asked for the good stuff, but they gave me the good stuff. <laughs> and and he and he hands it to me, right? <laughs> yes. And so everybody, like I tell, they get so upset with me, but I, I refused it. Because yeah. I'm like, I appreciate the offer. You know, and after we shoot, I would love to, but right now I'm working, I want to stay focused. And he looks at me and he goes, What are you afraid you're gonna get in trouble? Don't you know I'm the boss here? <laughs> Holy shit. So you're like the only sober dude on the whole set? Is no, that the whole <laughs> I don't know. I, I honestly don't know who else was involved in that, but I don't think I'm shocking anybody. No, no. <laughs> on the planet when I say Snoop was definitely. No. no and no. Snoop is, by the way, very, very, very nice guy. Very cool. Very gracious, inviting dude. He's not gangster? He's, I'm sure he is. But he <laughs> on set, he's super friendly and he's, uh, you know, he's funny. Really quick. Really quick-witted, funny guy. He looks pretty chill to me. I he's, mean. yeah. But he came right up to me. I walked out on set and I was dressed as a groom, you know, and my tux on. And he comes right up to me and he goes, he goes, now here's a man who likes to dress to impress. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody, awesome. everybody was so laid back. They were having a great time. They loved being there and they made everyone feel welcome. Like I got to hang Dude. out with them for like a week and it was great the whole time. It was great. That's freaking fantastic. How long was the shoot entirely? Do you know? Or, um, I think, I think they shot, I think 28 days, 28 days. total, so. uh, which is, which is pretty short. Um, well, but, you'd expect it though for a film like this where yeah, it was people pretty are pretty local. much the whole thing's improv. Like, you know? <laughs> 
And I know uh, I, I watched an interview with Isla and uh, saying it that uh, she was not smoking. She said pretty much yeah, everybody no. smoked. So if there's one person uh, you have that was sober on set with you, it's Isla Fisher. <laughs> yeah, I, Isla <laughs> says she doesn't smoke. So I, you know, and the, and there was a lot of weed, but you know, it was it was prop weed supposedly. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> really? Know? So they usually use the prop stuff. You know, Matthew prop weed my ass. Yeah, right. <laughs> Prop weed my ass. <laughs> he was he was in character the whole time, the whole time. So oh, really, yeah, he was totally method. No shit, completely. And when you see the interviews with him, he's like, it was a vacation. <laughs> you just made a movie, and this is mind boggling to me, with Jimmy Buffett and Snoop Dogg. Yeah. <laughs> How did the movie even get made? Yeah, right. Would you, was it fun? Us, it seems like it would be fun. No, it was a blast. I mean, we got away with I can't believe I got paid for that one. Was <laughs> is the title of the movie Let's Just Find the Most Fun Guys in the World and Put Them Together and Let Them Go? <laughs> yeah, you know, he I was did, having the time. Yeah, I saw life. the interviews and he looked like he was enjoying it. He's like they they're like, Do you, did your mom like care that that you were uh, like stoned the whole time? He's like <laughs> she promotes me, man. <laughs> He's, it's funny though because when I got there, I didn't know he was in character. Because we're we're waiting that you know you you get on set and they're like, oh here sit here's where the talent's sitting whatever. And yeah. I sit next to him and I introduce myself. It's my first day and he's like, oh it's nice to meet you. And you know he's very in Moon Dog. If you've seen the trailer, you know what that character's like. He's yeah. very chilled out. He's very like eh, you know. <laughs> and so and so uh, of course, but at this point I had never seen I hadn't seen the trailer. Obviously, we didn't shoot it yet, so I didn't really have right. a clear vision, you know, of what Moon Dog would look like. Right. So the whole time he's acting this way, and people are like, "What was it like to work with Matthew? What's he like?" And I was like, "He's exactly like you'd imagine him." <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's gonna think of like Dazed and Confused, yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> like Wooderson, right? <laughs> so um, as it turns out, he was in character the whole time, and the day I realized it, my last day. I go into hair and makeup to say goodbye to, to some people and he's in there getting his wig taken off and he's like, oh, hey, man, how you doing? Did you like that last scene? That was a lot of fun, right? Did you have a good time? And he's acting like a normal dude. And I was like, oh, he was in character the whole time. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, because why, how would you know? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. He's not that dude from Interstellar. like God. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, so, uh, Josh, how'd you get into acting? You know, I did it like little things growing up and uh, even in high school a little bit. I just kind of dabbled in it, but I never really thought about it. But um, when I got to college, I was hanging out first semester and it was, you know, everybody's partying. You know, college is great. And You mean the people party in college? I know. I, I shouldn't reveal that here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, and this guy comes up. He's passing me and my friends and we're like, hey, where are you going, man? And he's like, oh, I'm going to audition for the play. And we're like, you an actor? He goes, no, I just think it'll be fun. And we're like, all right, let's go with you. And that's cool. literally, and it turned out to be, at the time, this school, uh, I went to Ramapo College, and uh, it was a tiny, tiny college in northern Jersey. And they had a tiny theater, and they could kind of do whatever they wanted. And so they did a Lorca play, Blood Wedding. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I auditioned for it, and I got a freaking part. Oh, cool. And when I was doing the rehearsals and working with the director and the other actors, I was just like, this is what I want to do, you know, because yeah. you get a sense of the work, you get a sense of the kind of preparation that goes into it, solving problems and stuff. And it was like amazing. And I just got obsessed from that point on. And I, so I did the main stage shows in college and then I just, I just couldn't stop trying to do it. Really? You yeah. did a lot of stage work then. I did it. I did a ton of theater. I was trained in theater. And even when I moved to Florida, I did some theater in New York. I did a, a, a showcase production with Sam Shepard and uh, in the in the theater world, Sam Shepard is like a god. Yeah, I was like just everybody, say, man. <laughs> it's crazy for Sam Shepard. And so I did a showcase at the Public Theater, uh, and he was like a consultant on that because it was based off his short stories. And uh, that got me into the Actors Union. That was like 2006 a Actors Equity. And then uh, I moved down here 2008, and I did some theater down here. And then I very slowly got into screen work. And then I, yeah. I started. I got like Burn Notice and Graceland commercials. Speaking of Burn Notice. I have to bring this up because yeah. uh, my mother loves Burn Notice, uh -huh. and I told her that you played a character, <laughs> yeah. the fisherman, yeah. on Burn Notice. So tell us about Burn Notice. I mean, just for my mom. No, it's great. <laughs> no, 
Will's mom, this is for you. <laughs> uh, no, Burn Notice was awesome. I hung out with uh, with Bruce Campbell and Christan- so Christana cool. Loken the whole day. That's awesome. They're super, super down to earth, very cool people. And uh, essentially in the scene, it's, it's, it's season six. Uh, I can't remember. I think episode four. And uh, I get carjacked in the scene. And Christana Loken comes around the corner while Bruce Campbell's talking to me. And she just cold cock block cold cock block (laughs) (laughs) only had six of these she just hits me in the face with a gun essentially knocks me out cold the great thing about this this level of stuff when you're working because burn notice obviously huge show obviously uh is that they're they're like so good about the um the safety they're insane about safety but yeah it was fun i got and then and then uh don jeffrey donovan like rescues me from the trunk of the car and everything so i had a few scenes in there and it was a great experience It was a lot of fun everybody was cool and it's funny that you mentioned this Mm -hmm. because i when i was i was flying back home and i'm in the security line and there's a guy like i don't know 50 feet away and he turns i see him out of the corner of my eye and he looks at me and he's looking at me and i'm like who's this guy looking at me so i go and i look back at him and it's freaking Jeffrey Donovan. Oh, cool. <laughs> and the second I make eye contact with him, he's like, and he turns away. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, I wonder if he recognized me. <laughs> I never ended up talking to him, but he's I was like, like, I'm out of you. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably so used to people looking at him like, who is this guy? And like running away so he doesn't have to deal with crazy fans. But but yeah, but no, but Burn Notice was great. They, I'll tell you that they work really fast. They would do like two takes, move on, two takes, move on. The energy was high. The tension was high. Yeah, because they got like a week to get it done. Yeah, right? they, so. that show was very ambitious yeah. for the time, and they got a lot done very quickly. So, yeah, Burn Notice was awesome. And So you're also a musician. Yeah. And you play some gigs with your wife, Karen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, you know, we met in like 2005, and she was already, she was in like this big band in the 90s in Boston called Lunar Plexus. And they had a lot of success, really? and yeah, they, it was like an electronica band, and she was the front woman and keyboard player. And they had, uh, like, she got her songs on, like, soap operas and stuff. When I started dating her, she was getting, like, checks in the mail and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, oh this chick's so cool. And uh, You they, hooked up at that point. Yeah, I was, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, she's so much cooler than I am. And she's so much more successful in, in the music industry. And she... Uh, they opened for like Aerosmith and they had like, what? they were, they were, had a really big following in the nineties. I didn't know that. And Damn. so, you know, a couple months after we started dating, you know, it was kind of this feeling hanging in the air of like, we should do music together. And we just finished recording about a year ago, eight songs with this great producer, Christopher Mall, um, who was in Pompano at the time. He's in Nashville now, but, um, awesome. so we haven't released them yet because we're oh, trying to decide say. the best way to do it. But uh, but yeah, we were playing out. We played out a lot last year. You know, just do restaurants and bars and stuff. And uh, <laughs> do you guys have any live shows or anything you want to plug for that? Do think people can find out more about that? Well, you can go on to Facebook, Modern Day Alchemy. Uh, we have a website, Modern Day Alchemy dot com. We were late to the uh, website thing, and uh, which is why there's so many hyphens in it. But uh, but yeah, I mean, we've got some samples of the music on there. And, uh, you know, we'll probably be playing it. We play out from time to time and do acoustic sets and stuff. I've seen some stuff for it. It looks cool, man. How many I, instruments do you play? Or I, is it I play piano? piano and I, a guitar is my main one now. I play bass. Uh, I love bass. Bass is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, so I play all of them. And I would say that, you know, guitar, guitar is my uh, most proficient, you know. So you're like Prince. Just I'm give, just like Prince. Give you an instrument and... I, That's yeah, that. yeah, you know, they all kind of follow the same rules. So if you can master one of them, you can apply your knowledge to the others. All right. So I guess we have a clip of you in the beach bum. Oh. We're going to play it right now. I'm just joking. We don't have a clip of you. <laughs> so I, I couldn't like, find a clip. I haven't seen it. I couldn't find a clip of, of shit for the beach bum <laughs> except for Matthew McConaughey. Like yeah. the, even the trailer is just Matthew just McConaughey, him. Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is him, a series of misadventures. Uh, yeah. It's it's like a series of vignettes. I tell you that it's it's wild. It's crazy. It's, I mean. I couldn't even find a clip of Stefania in the trailers. She's kind of the moral compass of the movie. So she's All the right. daughter who's really well adjusted, even though she should not be well adjusted given her parents. And, uh, <laughs> which is why she marries me. But, um, because <laughs> yeah, I'm, right. I'm limp dick. I'm the guy. The who only is, dude that didn't smoke pot on the set. Yeah. <laughs> That's a perfect description of my character. Yeah. And I, without giving too much away, this won't give anything away, but, um, 
let's just say Moondog is unhappy that his daughter is marrying me and he does not yeah. like me because I'm a square. <laughs> Fun fact, though, I talked to Stefania's publicist the other day. Really? And tried to get her to Skype in to surprise you today. Oh, my God. But uh, she's filming right now somewhere. Oh, that's wild. And they were really super nice about it. Oh, that's uh, wild. But it would have happened if it wasn't for that schedule. That's issue. so cool. You're so creative <laughs> and smart. That's so cool. <laughs> it, I thought it would have been fun. It so. would have been awesome. <laughs> Stefania is, is uh, she was 19 when we filmed our stuff, and I hung out with her every day. I saw that. I was like, cradle robber. Yeah, right. Cradle robber. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, it's funny. They told me that I was doing the role, and they told me who's playing my wife, and I was like, oh, I'll look her up. And I was like, oh, my God, she's a teenager. <laughs> at the time, I was like, I was just almost 40, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to get arrested if they see this movie. Yeah, but you don't look anywhere near your age, man. Thank so you. it's all good. I'm sure I, the uh, casting agent knew that. Too, yeah, so. well, that was. <laughs> yeah, luckily, I looked a little younger. But uh, but yeah, I mean, but she's she's super professional, super super talented she was such a she was always at ease really nice she was i told her at the end of shooting i said you were like the best person to have on set with me because she was just like mature beyond her years very professional very cool she so. seemed pretty cool and she's been doing this like since she was a fetus or something i mean <laughs> you look at you look at her list of credits and you're like oh my god how does she do this elbow notch and that pregnant lady yeah that that, that was that, that was, was her. her that was her <laughs> she got <Yeah>. paid <laughs> what is the craziest thing that happened to you while you were filming being offered uh to smoke with snoop was pretty crazy <laughs> and that was offset that was that was when the camera wasn't rolling yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but uh that was pretty cool that was That's, pretty crazy dude being offered to smoke with snoop in any any freaking time would be yeah any capacity amazing. it's yeah. amazing uh but yeah it was it, it you just got a sense of the wildness you know I, I, I there's a lot of wild scenes there's a lot of women there's a lot of drugs. There's a lot of alcohol. Lot of there's alcohol. a lot of craziness, uh, a lot of destruction, a lot of fire. It's really there's some crazy stuff what? in this movie. It's a wild, wild ride. And if if you if you're into like, you know, the interesting thing is it's like a stoner movie, but it's directed by Harmony. So it's you know he's got this very gritty realism that he does in the style yeah and so you can tell in the where trailer. you watch like yeah and where you watch like cheech and chong and it's all or you know half baked or whatever the classic stoner movies are well cheech you know and it's chong all kind is of fun. definitely gritty yeah yeah it's yeah. gritty and it's got yeah. like you know the time period i think played a role in that sure but um but this has this feels very real. I don't think they used a tripod the whole freaking shoot. Really, you know? it was all, it's all like handheld. They would have two or three cameras at all time, you know, handheld, and you can feel what? it. So when you're watching it, it feels real to a certain extent. And so it's a it's really interesting. I've never seen a movie like this because there's a lot of comedy in it, and there's a lot of wildness, over the top stuff. But at right. the same time, there's a real sense of realism. There's a part of you that feels like it's really happening. And so, and as you know, with comedy, it's always funniest because you know it's not real. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You know, somebody gets a safe drop down their head. That's not funny in real life, you know, to most people. Yeah. Right. And I'm really happy to report most of my stuff made it in. They didn't really cut out much of my stuff. All right. On. Which is like. Because you've huge, seen the movie. Because I've seen the movie. But Miscast Entertainment's not cool enough to see the movie yet. So I'm only picking your brain for the movie. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't want to give too much away again, but it's a. Uh, but yeah, you never know how much they because they come they cut tons and tons and tons of stuff sure. out of every movie. Oh yeah, and a, oh, yeah. a lot of times it's just to keep it keep it tight. But um, I didn't know when I went into the theater, I was like, I don't know how much of this, you know. Sure. Am I even me. in the movie? Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's the first concern. That's the very first concern. Is like, did they just cut me out completely? Oh, that's a story I wanted to tell you. <laughs> oh, good. So the red carpet, right? So I I talked to some people setting up. I'm like, I'm in the area at like four because I don't want to be late. And I'm, I'm kind of waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm like, oh, screw this. I'm going early. And so I go early. There's lines around the block to see this thing. It was like the biggest thing. Dude, it's South and by Southwest. It was crazy. It that was whole like the Saturday week. night movie, yeah, South by Southwest. Insane, yeah, it man. was awesome. So I go, up to, I go up to the staff and they bring me to the front. And the woman's looking through a clipboard. And she goes, oh, I don't see your name on here. I said, no, I should be on here because I'm going to. They told me I'm going to do pictures. And then um, there, there's me right next to Martin Lawrence. By the way, Martin yeah, Lawrence, <laughs> if you love Martin Lawrence, and you should, uh, you're going to love his role in this movie. Because I can tell you, he had 
the biggest freaking laughs of the whole movie. Really? It was, his role is just perfection. It's the first time I've seen him since, uh, I don't know, like 10 years, I think. Yeah, I think I think eight years ago, he did Boys a Big 2. Mama's House. Yeah, he's Bad Boys 3, he's filming. Or 3, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. He's filming three. that with Will yeah. Smith, so right. he's he's got a lot going on. But so they said, uh, oh, there you are, okay, go ahead on the red carpet. And the funny part was, obviously I'm not as famous as, you know, McConaughey and yet. all these people. Yet. And, uh, so they, but I arrived really early and they're like, oh, you, you're on the list. Go ahead, get your picture taken. All of the press was lined up talking like live streaming, you know, right. and being like, we're just waiting for the stars to come out for like 20 minutes. And I come out. And so everybody's like, oh, and so I interviewed with everybody. <laughs> Dude, you owned it too. I, it was Thank great. You. Hey, watch it again. I'm happy to be in the medical marijuana business because I think it's been good medicine for a long time. My relationship with weed before this role uh, has always been, um, you know, uh, uh, recreational. <laughs> Thank you. And it was, uh, but yeah, it was, so I got to interview with everybody, which was awesome. But I, and uh, there was a couple clips I made it in uh, when they edited it together and stuff. But the funny, the funny thing was, is because I showed up early, you know, because if I had showed up with everybody else, you know, they'd be, obviously they'd be going to the biggest people. And how that works. Like, so you get there and you just, you can walk whenever you want. Like, no. So no, what they uh, have is, you know, they have the carpet and they have the backdrop. And so you go behind the backdrop and that's where they have the velvet rope and they have the, I can't, I don't know the name of the person who was checking the clipboard, but the they, dude. Uh, the, the, the dude who's also, <laughs> a, also a woman. Uh, <laughs> And so she's checking the clipboard and, you know, and then she kind of, okay, you go ahead, you know, to get your picture taken. So um, she's the one who decides when people go through. But she let me go in early because, you know, I was there, you know, and uh, and everybody, the press was there. Everybody was there. So she's okay, go ahead. And you were just like. I went out there and <laughs> microphones in my face, microphones, questions, awesome. questions, questions. So I was like, all right, let's do this. So I did all the interviews all the way down the line. I did 10 or 15 interviews. It was it's awesome. Fantastic. And then, and then they take you to the green room up in the theater and the green room is, you know, where all the, everybody's drinking and everybody's smoking. hanging out. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> having a great time. And that's Matthew McConaughey's backyard. So like he uh, lives in Austin. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. He's from Austin. So I knew he was going to be there. Not all the stars made it, you know, cause Jonah Hill's in the movie. Sure. He didn't make Zac it. Efron and Zac Efron. And Efron didn't make it. I think he hurt his leg. Um, but uh, Wednesday, I'm going out to L.A. for the L.A. premiere. Oh, nice. And Snoop is pro is apparently going to be there. And nice. Zac Efron's going to be there. All right. Yeah, so that'll be a lot of fun. And go to the after party. It's going to be at the Arclight Theater in Hollywood. Dude, and that's awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. How many premieres do you get to go to? <laughs> I don't know, but they've been they've been doing special things all over the country. I can't believe there's not a Miami premiere though. It's you know, they were Miami. talking about it. They were talking about, well, we're going to do a Miami premiere. We're going to do a Miami premiere. And I don't know. They just Nothing. they just never ended up doing it. But that that would be the uh, the whole thing was shot in Miami. Right. It, well, Miami. some of it was in the Keys, but I mean, right. still, it's Florida. It's South right. Florida. You know. So I was a little shocked by that. And plus, Harmony lives in Miami. And he loves it down here. Yeah, you know? he said he thought of the movie while he was sitting there, like talking to smugglers in the keys. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's he's that? wild, man. He's so he much. Seems like he's, he's smoked a lot, of, a little bit too much, maybe. Yeah, you look in, you look into his past interviews and his history, and you'll see quite a lot of wild stuff. Like a psycho <laughs> skater that wrote a play about people with AIDS. Yeah, like, <laughs> I remember uh, seeing kids. Do you remember seeing dude, it when it kids, came out? Kids was the first movie I saw that I didn't think was funny. Like, I think I was like that. That's a stoner movie, yeah. but that's not funny. I think that man. broke my brain. Uh, it was so I was Chloe traumatized Savini, for man. five like, years. Oh my gosh, man! Ugh. It was wild. Movie. Yeah, I still have to take a shower when I think about it. Yeah, man. he's he's uh he's got a unique perspective. That guy, he knows what he's doing. He seems like a cool freaking dude, though. And I don't, I don't. He's very cool, very laid back, and I don't know an actor who would not jump at the opportunity to work with. Even half the directors I know, they're like, "Oh my god, Harmony Crew." All these guys were like, "Harmony, I'm on it." Like, yeah, I don't care. Like, and I can't imagine that he was really directing. I can only just imagine that he was just like, all right, so here's what's kind of going to go on this day and just make it happen, guys. Yeah, he's very <laughs> loose. He ran a loose ship. There's a bucket full of pot and it's like yeah. organized in a different kind of sativas. <laughs> yeah. Like, help yourselves. That's like the catering service. You're too uptight. <laughs> Take the indica. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Uh, you got anything you're working on now? Any upcoming projects? Yeah, you know, uh, there's a couple things, actually. Um, announcements. We, we filmed a movie in Del Rey called Off the Rails back five years ago. Uh, Damien Fitzsimmons is the director um, uh, who's a, he works with Brave Man Media in Del Rey, and they do a ton of projects. 
but uh, it it was it it spent forever in hell with editing. They just couldn't get the right edit. Oh shit! And so they they end they had the cinematographer is the guy who did uh, Entourage, and he did uh, he just won an Emmy for The Handmaid's Tale. Oh dang! And so we got him as the cinematographer, and That's then we awesome. finally the guy who edited the movie was the assistant editor on The Revenant. And what? he was essentially, <laughs> so nice. I don't know the details of how they did this, but he was working on The Revenant during the day and then our movie at night. <laughs> but it's a comedy, takes place in the 70s, uh, coming of age tale. <laughs> it's called Off the Rails and uh, it's in eight different film festivals now. It just had its premiere at Liverpool in 2018, won Best Feature and Best Actress. And then it Holy premiered hell. in the US uh, on March 3rd at the Miami International Film Festival. And now it's in six other festivals and it's doing the rounds for the next two right. months. So uh, you check that out on IMDb. It's a, it's a great movie. I got to go to the premiere on March and 3rd. And you played Jimmy. I played Jimmy Walsh. And he's, uh, I'm kind of like the comic relief. I'm like the parrot in Aladdin. <laughs> if that's Yago. a close representation. I'm the sidekick <laughs> of the bad guy. But I'm the comic relief. And uh, it, that was a lot of fun to film. So that that's, you know, take a look at that. That's coming around. And then last year I filmed... Uh, uh, for a, a small role in a movie called Critical Thinking, which is about um, a true story it took place in the 90s, Miami chess team, high school chess team that went on to uh, compete in the nationals. Uh, bad side of the tracks, kids, you know, underfunded school. And it's a beautiful, beautiful super story. Serious. It's, it's super serious, not like the other movies. Uh, it's a beautiful story. But the thing that was so thrilling about it Starring and directed by John Leguizamo. What? Yeah, we filmed it in Miami just last he year. He lives. He is. <laughs> when he's so big in the theater world, he's another one that's huge in the theater. Yeah, world. Yeah, he had that monologue. Uh, that uh, monologue. Yeah. Yeah, that, he did that Broadway monologue. He was did, pretty uh, sick. What? Uh, it was a few years ago. La Latin American history for dummies. It was like four hours of just him like doing like he, 18 he always different did characters one man shows. yeah he's, it was so crazy when, in the 90s when i was in college my, prof my professors were like oh he's doing some one-man shows on hbo you gotta see this and they would tell us to go home and watch you know right his stuff is amazing so to be directed by him and have a scene with him was another thing that was just like so thrilling and i know I, you were like you were like dude you gotta tell me what was it like playing luigi yeah <laughs> <laughs> the hard hitting questions. That's yeah. what we asked John Leguizamo. The hardest hitting questions. And you're like, so, Ice Age. Oh. How was that? Actually, he's probably more famous for that than yeah, that's, right. Right. that's his no, biggest project. Like, holy shit. Like, we're talking billions of dollars. Oh, right yeah. There, man. That, and he killed it. Five installments in that. Yeah, the sloth, man. Oh, oh my gosh. yeah. No, he's great. And that's a funny thing because he's another one who's a god in the theater. Yeah. Like, everybody in the theater world thinks he's like including me. He's a genius. Sure. My lives are but, hard. Dude. Yeah. But he makes, but he, he probably became most famous because of the ice age movies, which he did great in, dude, you know, those movies are but beloved like, by millions. People are grown up from those. Yeah. Already, you no, know, yeah, adults from when the first one came he, out. So. It, it's ironic. Cause it's so like the opposite of theater. Yeah. <laughs> you know, It's just the voice, you know, well, that's awesome. You worked with them. I got to work with him. Yeah, that was man. a dream come true. That was like a bucket list thing. Did he put you in your place? No, he's very laid back. <laughs> he did not put me in my place, I'm glad to say, because he's a tough, he's tough. You can yeah. tell he's got a toughness, sure. uh, but he's very professional, very laid back, That's very great. friendly guy, shaking hands with the extras, messing around with them, you know? Really? Yeah, he was That's like, awesome. he was messing with people, like joking with them, like tricking them. He was, he's a lot of fun. He's a cool guy. So yeah, those are the two big things uh, I got going on right now. I'm pretty excited about it, you know? Going That's to LA awesome. in a few days, I'm, I'm freaking stoked, man. Man, I'm glad I got on your schedule. I mean, yeah. even though it was hard to, <laughs> to get this going. I'm no. glad we got it going. Well, hey, man. I've seen your show, and I was like, I really want to be. I, when you told me about it, I was like, oh, I got to get on this thing. I appreciate and, I, that. and I had told you, it's it's uh, it's fabulous, dude. I love this show. It's so funny, and uh, especially when you have the other guys here, and you guys are tossing around jokes, and like, it's awesome. I love it. It's a great show, and you know. I'm a huge fan. Thanks, man. They'd be here, but Thanos snapped them away. I yeah. don't know. What do you want from me? What do you want? It's bound to happen. You're saying some bad things about it. Maybe him. they'll come back after Endgame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll they'll see. fix it in the quantum universe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, it's been a great pleasure having you on. Well, I appreciate it very much. I really 
like I said, I love the show. You know, congratulations on this show. It's freaking great. I love it. But yeah, Beach Bum, March 29th. It's going to be wide. It's going to be everywhere. March 29th, guys, man. Hey, I'm going to be seeing it with you guys because I wasn't cool enough to get a freaking early screening. So what do you want from me? But I got a cool ass actor from the Beach Bum. So what do you want? Huh? (laughs) Go see it. Buy a ticket. Make sure it makes a billion dollars so that I can retire from one job. All right, guys, you know the drill. Hey, wait, if you're here long enough to see this, then you didn't smoke enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> and if you did and you're still here, uh, isn't that a shiny, awesome subscribe button? And wow, if you hit that bell next to it, doesn't it make cool sounds? Uh, and you know what? Mega Man's moving. <laughs> Mega Man's moving. It's like magic. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell next to it. Hit up the merch section. It's linked in the bottom. And... All of the stuff we've been talking about with old Joshua Ritter here is linked in the description as well. You can check out his music when it comes out or find out when it comes out. And you can see all the stuff that's coming up. And hopefully, you can see all the stuff he's done. It'll all be down there. And until the next time, miscreants, peace. Peace. Anyway, bro. You can manhandle everything. I, I, I will swallow. There's only so much I want to manhandle. <laughs> <laughs> test, it's test, test. New mic. Test, 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 test. Check. <laughs> Check. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so, Josh, tell us about yourself. Right, the funny thing that happened was I would go down. Are we filming, yeah. we filming now or what? Yeah, we are. We are filming. We are recording. Are we on TV? <coughs> we are on TV. Fuck it, we'll do it live. Just want to say how happy I am to be here on Collider. It's quite an honor. Yeah, that's brutal. Man. <laughs>